Timmy Thibodeau, how you doing, buddy? Pretty good. Hey, you know, I had a good uh, chat with your brother, Johnny Moores. He you told did? Me, yeah, he told me his birthday party seems like it lasted for three days. I don't know. <laughs> did you go? I'm I think not his sure. birthday party lasted for like 50 yeah. years. To tell you yeah, this. and, and <clears throat> the way he was describing it, it was like it was a survival course for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, my brother's birthday was the other day. Happy birthday. And, hey, <laughs> yeah. listen, happy birthday to your wife, too. Yeah, uh, yeah. Today's her birthday, right? Today it's her birthday, yeah. Yeah, yeah. April's but, got a lot of good birthdays. <laughs> yeah, it does. And I think yours is tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, Mine's tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, you're going to be an old fart, too. Well, you haven't quite joined the club, okay? <laughs> But, well, uh, I'm going to be 57 tomorrow. It's hard yeah. to believe. You know, it's here I am. Right, you know, and here, look at here I am 70 now. I'm working with uh, 10, 11, 12 year olds with with baseball over in Troy, right? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and it's kind of what's different about it is that you look at your age right here and you're working, you find yourself different, okay, that you're working with kids this young. Okay. Well, you know, you love baseball, and you've been teaching kids for for many long, years. Long time, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Even even your uh, your boy Chris. That's yeah. how far back we go. Even my and son Chris. Thank you, Pam. Yeah. Welcome. Said happy birthday to me. She knows I'm getting old. Yeah. We went to Chris school is together. probably about 30, 35 years now, right? Well, Chris could be thirty this next month. Yeah. Yeah. So so when he was 12, 10, 11, 12 years old, you know, we had yeah. him for twenty two years ago. So yeah. 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 But I still so let me jump into something it. that I I want to. Uh, Congratulate the city of Cahos because, <clears throat> you know, um, a great honor. They kind of they kind of got a little award, right? Yeah. Um, there's this organization called Two Button Something, and I should know their name better to tell you the truth because I'm two actually on deep, their website. I think. It's called it's Two, two button, button Deep or Two Yeah Two yeah. Button Deep. Yeah, that's who it is, and they're pretty big. They have like a hundred and fifty thousand followers. Yeah, I mean that's pretty good. Yeah. When you have 150,000, we're up to 50,000 and I thought we were doing good, but they, they, they don't really have a show, but you know, they just have a Facebook and, and they, they talk about news and, they, and, and yeah. entertainment in the capital region, but they have a lot of followers yeah. and they picked out their, uh, and I'm not a big fan of Bud Light, as you can imagine. Right. And I think I don't that's, drink it now anymore, yeah. and I think that's part of the whole uh, joke about it, but, uh, yeah. um, but they gave out the Bud Light award and this year, um, it was the city of Cahos. <laughs> and yeah. uh, as you can see, they picked the worst city for potholes yeah. and they filled it with Bud Light and put a little ice in there. Yeah. And if you just look down the street, you can what? see this beautiful tower that I lit up and the flags above it. Yeah. And the mayor of the city can look right out the, the, the uh, front steps and see that his city <laughs> wins the award for the biggest, shittiest, potholes in the capital region right huh? down you... the street right, <laughs> down, right down the street from city hall what do you okay? think about that huh? jesus one thing after another okay here you gotta go right down the street if you want a cold one <laughs> <laughs> pull it out of the pothole so Cajos continues to uh, uh make news and uh for some reason it's never good news but congratulations to uh mayor keeler and uh the rest of uh his administration who's in charge of steve hennessy who's probably instead of fixing potholes yelling and screaming at everybody at the top of his lungs yep. so uh, we want to th we want to thank two button deep two button for, deep for recognizing us okay. for recognizing cohos with its hundred and fifty thousand followers yep um to for take this prestigious award the Bud Light Pothole Award goes to Cahoes, Cahoes New York. And it's just wonderful. Congratulations, Cahoes. This is you. a big month for Cahoes, you know. Again, <laughs> you know, uh, we're coming up on up also with uh, the five year anniversary of Billy Killer's DPW uh, excavation <laughs> up, uh, up, at, and, uh, up at his house. So. Keep plugging well, away, April. Listen, I guess no matter what, uh, you, they win an award, they should all celebrate. I don't yeah. think he's around. I think he's on his 18th vacation this year. But uh, mm -hmm. for everybody else, if you take a ride down there, you maybe had to grab a Bud Light out of that beautiful pothole, have a beer, <laughs> toast, and and congratulations to the city yeah. of Coast. Now, you know, Timmy, on a, a little more serious note, um, you know, here in the capital region, we're hearing about this stuff all the time. But uh, right here in the city of Albany, we had a police officer who was who was shot. And uh, man, that's scary. 
it is scary. And first and foremost, you know, uh, I send my prayers to him and his family for a speedy recovery. But this is what our police officers deal with every day, every mm-hmm. single day now. Yeah. That's and right. it's yep. because of what? What has changed in the world from 1980 mm-hmm. to 2024? And I say 80 because that's when I was going to school and I was a kid, right? Mm-hmm. What has changed to make the world such a bad, violent place? And, you know, there's a common thread, bro. And it's politicians. It's policies. It's, it's, it's saying we don't put people in jail. We they don't hold them accountable. Right. We, we arrest them, and an hour later, they're out on the streets. We yeah. found out that the poor cop who was killed in New York City, the guy was arrested 19 times, and he was just out of, of, of um, uh, 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 out from, I don't even know what you call it, bond? Bail Is it even a bond? He's out. He's, he went to court. They said, okay, don't, don't shoot nobody with the gun you shouldn't have had illegally. And they yep. let him out in the streets. Right. Bail reform. Okay. Bail, Bail reform. reform. We had John McDonald okay. on here. We had yeah. Apple. I think everybody recognizes McDonald talks from a political standpoint. So he has to walk the but the line a little. But yeah, he admitted that it wasn't doing exactly what they hoped it would do. And Apple, from a, a police perspective, said, this shit is bad. It's dangerous. Yeah. And, and, and it's just a revolving door of crime. And so we see a New York City police officer killed by a guy who should have been in jail because he had illegal guns, mm-hmm. bad apples, bad people. Mm-hmm. Now we see um, a, a, an Albany cop shot. And the good part, and I hate to say it, I don't want to sound like a savage. The good part is we didn't have to worry about bear reform because you know what? The bad guy wasn't the best shot and the cop was a great shot and he's dead today. And we ain't got to worry about that bad guy. So you ain't got to worry about bear reform. But is that what it's going to come to? You got to yeah, shoot and yeah. kill everybody in the middle of the streets. It's yeah. an okay corral. You know, our county jail out there, they've got about 500 cells that are vacant, okay? And it's the reason why, okay, is that these people are not being incarcerated, yet your staff, they're down about 30 guys, okay? It, it, it's it, it's it, bad. It, and it's all boiled down to this bail reform. Well, it's bail reform and the, raise the age. And we yeah, talked yeah, about it on yes. the show 15 times. I don't have to say it a thousand times. Mm -hmm. I don't. People are smart. Yeah. Right? We have people committing violent crimes who walk into the courthouse, they get a ticket, and they're out the door only to be shooting cops, robbing people in the streets, hitting people over the head with baseball bats, pushing people in front of the subway. What is going on? Where is common sense? I guess it's not that common, right? I mean, what, what... we allow these people to rule our lives. We vote. That's the greatest power we have as citizens. We vote. And we keep voting the same morons in. I mean, if somebody came to my house and hit me over the head with a bat, would I vote for him the next day? No. But if you vote for the same guy that yeah. passed the policies to let that guy hit you with the bat and be out on the streets, he's just as bad. He's a criminal. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, look at just what happened hours ago in in uh, this U.S. Senate. You know, this impeachment with uh, Mayorkas. Okay, what does uh, Schumer do? He turns around and gets all the Democrats. Okay, not to support it. So, bottom line is, our borders are going to continue to be flooded. We're going to continue to have illegals here like this, and. What did Hogel do? We're going to get into that in a little bit. We're going to Let, talk about that in a little bit. Let me just jump yeah. over because I want people to see yes. uh, this this video. It's got to take me a second because yeah. this is a uh, shared screen video. But I just want people to watch this. I'm sure they've seen it, yeah. but it, it it's alarming. It's alarming. Yeah. Play it. Albany police telling us this shootout happened overnight, uh, and it happened near the intersection of North Main Avenue and Western Avenue. Chief Eric Hawkins said the officers saw a car speeding in that area, chased it briefly before ending the chase for safety reasons. You see the map on your screen right now. Then Hawkins says the officer found the car later parked on the side of the road and approached. That's when Hawkins said the officer was shot in the upper thigh and he shot back at the suspect. Dan Levy has been following this story all day, joins us now with the latest details. Dan, this body camera video is just intense. 
It is very intense. It tells a picture. It tells a story. And this is something that the folks who live in that neighborhood live through. Can you imagine revving engines, screeching tires, bright flashing lights, and then gunfire? I mean, it was a terrifying night in the Pine Hills. Two men involved in a gunfight. One of them carried a badge. That man underwent surgery here today at Albany Medical Center. And the other man underwent an autopsy. It was the start of the overnight shift, 12.30 a.m., when an Albany police officer parked on Western Avenue noticed a vehicle whiz past him. Estimated speed, more than 80 miles per hour. Dash cam video records the initial pursuit, but moments later, due to the dangerous circumstances, that officer self-terminates. A short time later, the officer sees that same car parked near the corner of North Main and Western. Body cam video shows the officer exiting his squad car approaching the vehicle that's when gunfire rang out the suspect clearly fired at the officer first struck I mean, there you go. If, if, if that doesn't send chills through your spine, listen, if you're a father, a mother, a husband, a wife, an aunt or uncle of a police officer, a, a son, a daughter, you got to be petrified. You got to just be, you, you, you got to think to yourself every single day they walk out the door, their lives are now. Listen, they are, their lives. True. Look at. I was a firefighter. I knew cops back in the day. The world has always been dangerous, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But it's nothing like it is today. Yeah. Today the world is you so don't know dangerous. They're coming home. You don't, and 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 it's because we've created this atmosphere of like this. Okay, Corral. It's almost like that show. What the hell is that show where once a year they go around and yeah, everybody kills each other? <laughs> the Purge. Got, the Purge. It's almost like we have a full-time purge going on yeah. every day. And the bad guys are released to purge on the good people. Yeah. That's explain exactly that. what's going on. I, explain that to me. And Well, there was a purge show for the politicians. Yeah, we should be purging them. It's yeah. called elections. Yeah. It's election time. Mm -hmm. And and instead, you know what we do? Nothing. 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 Same we just old keep people. letting Yeah, same old And there's no urgency seem to fix this bail reform problem, you know? Timmy, it's here's what I do that. now. If you yeah. live in the city of Albany, crime rates in the city of Albany say that two hundred and one point four <laughs> 202, wherever you want to fluctuate yep. that, 201 people out of 100,000 will have some crime happen to them in the city of Albany. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's frightening. So the city of Albany yep. has about 100,000 people. So, so for every 100,000 people, 200 of them will have some kind of violent crime happen in their lives. Now, here's the shit that really burns me up, man. It's the mm -hmm. bullshit and it's the lies and it's the manipulation of the statistics, right? So the city of Albany is going to keep putting out there, well, yes, homicides are still high. Last year, they broke the record, 20 homicides in a small city, the capital of freaking New York, right? Where all the politicians go down there and collect 150 freaking thousand dollars a year to work part-time in the capital. And they have one of the shittiest capitals, the most dangerous capitals. It's a shithole and nobody mm -hmm. does nothing about it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. But, but Please. just, just, just think of this. So they can't wait to run out and go, oh, crime is down in other, every other category. I'm going to call political bullshit. You know why? Because crime ain't down. Getting arrested is down. The cops don't arrest people no more that commit these other crimes because it's a revolving door. Yeah, they keep telling me the same thing. I go and see them on certain issues here and there in the street, and they say, nothing we could do, nothing we... They won't so, even bother, okay? They won't bother. So when you hear them say crime is down, call bullshit because crime isn't down. 
People getting arrested is down. Yeah, and I, people and I, won't yeah, get and I, arrested because they're told, "Well, don't arrest them if they're stealing uh, TVs because they're hungry and they got to feed their kids." Yeah, where well, they got to eat the fucking cord? Give well, me a yeah, break. And you look at it, and I'm not bashing on Cahoe's police, but you know, you call them for this or for that or whatever, and I hear all the time the, the officers are saying, "We're powerless. We." We, you know, why even bother doing it? Because they're just going to let them on out. So the easiest thing to do is save them from all the paperwork and all the depositions is, sorry, we can't help. This is not a police officer problem. It's this not. is the elected officials who have a problem. It's like when you march with yeah. Black Lives Matter in mm -hmm. the city of Cohoes, and then you screw the cops and you yeah. want to give them a 1%, 2% raise yeah. while you're taking 20%. That's the problem. Yeah, the is. problem is when you got a person who's a head of the state assembly and, and he tells you that, oh, stiffer uh, crime penalties doesn't stop crime. Yeah. Bullshit, it doesn't. If I tell you you're going to go to prison for 20 years if you pull out a gun, there will be people who don't pull out that freaking gun. Believe me. Yeah. Believe me, you. People, people are uh, they're smart. <clears throat> Kids. Look at, right, and look, at, when we had Sheriff Apple on, he said it best, Sean, you know, these people down in Albany, they're, they're not boots on the ground. They don't see what's going on right here on the ground, okay? And they're not exposed to it, okay? They're in their own bubble, and they just, they, they're they just not connected to what's going on. In, well, they in, better in, get the their street. asses connected because you know? people are dying. Mm-hmm. Okay, people are dying. Cops are getting shot. This isn't like, look at, I got to be honest with you. When I was a young kid, even when I was in my early 20s, when a cop got shot, it was shocking to your senses. Yeah, like, yeah. Holy shit. Somebody yeah. shot a cop. Yeah. Because no. it just it just didn't seem to be something that you ever seen. It wasn't yeah. something that was happening like every day. And today, when you hear a kid uh, or a Excuse me, if you hear a kid got killed or shot, or if you hear a cop got killed or yeah. shot, you know what you do? It's almost numbing. Mm -hmm. And when you talk to yeah. all these young kids, it's like, yeah, yeah, he was a good guy. Yeah, yeah, let's go pour a fucking beer on his oh, yeah. uh, on the tombstone like it's like it's something uh, to, to celebrate. We have lost our humanity. We have <clears throat> lost our moral compass. Yeah. And it's 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 lost because because politicians allow you to live in that in that and that <clears throat> cesspool, yeah. yeah, it's a cesspool when of we life. Were, when we were kids, I mean, uh, we grew up with uh, what, what's it, all those little TV show towns and stuff. I can't even re remember what they were, okay? But y when you've seen this violence, and you know, it was rare and shocking. Today, it's like business as usual every day. It, it's unbelievable. I just know that, you know, it's, they say that after 100 days, uh, I thought maybe I'll stand corrected, but I read something where if you do something for 100 days, it becomes a habit. Right? Yeah, I guess so. That's what they say. Yeah. So if you let people out of prison and you let people get shot and this stuff is happening every single day, it almost becomes like a habit to ki people, kids. I worry about yeah. kids the most because you know what? They, they are the violent ones. These are not... Mm -hmm. uh, these are not middle-aged people. I'm not saying that middle-aged people ain't out there doing bad things, but when you start looking at the statistics of people who are shooting and killing, they're from like 18 to 30 years old. It's even younger than that, okay? It's, uh, well, you're, I, yeah, I, you're, you're going down to middle school now, and that's it's these kids in middle school, they grow up knowing that, hey, they can't touch me. Well, luckily they're not, well, I'm not saying they're not, yeah. but luckily they're not the ones that you're reading about shooting at each other. No, You no. know, you read it, it says 19-year-old, 20-year-old, 21-year-old, hit this 23-year-old shoots the cops, this guy shoots the cops. We have to do something. And, you know, the only thing that I can think of is really simple. When it comes time to vote, pay attention to the people you're voting into office. I don't care if you're a Democrat, Right. If you think that the world is better today than it was just five years ago, and you're going to say, well, I, Joe Biden is the greatest guy, Kathy Hochul is the greatest. If you're going to vote for these people just because you have a Democrat behind your name, you should start yeah. looking for the A, which is called American. 
and you should be proud to be an American. And you should say, I'm only going to support people that talk about safe streets, getting fentanyl off of our streets, closing the border. Timmy, these, these immigrants are so embrazen and so bold and so just out of touch. They're now picketing in New York City. They're not afraid because, of anything. Well, they're, getting, they're picketing because they're taking them out of $600 a month or six hundred dollar night hotel rooms yeah, they're probably and putting them into pay. shelters. Yeah. 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 So yeah. now they're gonna now they're gonna turn New York City upside down. They, they get cell phones, they get money cards. Yeah. I know somebody right now as we speak. As we speak right now, I just had an email and tried to talk. I know somebody who is going to be homeless tonight. Homeless. And went because? to went to social services. Because they're going to be homeless. And you know what they told them? What they tell them? Nothing I can do for you. Yeah. Are they American? I mean, they're American citizens. Right, right. Now, so, if I said to that person, listen, I'm just going to give you some advice. Yeah. Get on a bus, go down to New York City, tell them you're, you're an immigrant, and they're going to put you up. They're yeah. going to give you an iPhone. They're going to give you a... Uh, they're they're going to pay give for your you rent. A, you're going to get you're gonna, you're yeah, gonna these pricey hotels. Yeah, and you're going to get a money card, and yeah. they're going to pay for your health care, and they're going to pay for your school. Mm, everything. And so, how does this person going to be living in the streets tonight? And these people who are pulling up in buses are going to be chauffeured around like they're like they're kings celebrities. and queens. Yeah, yeah, celebrities. Okay. It and, makes and, no sense to me. And that's what's going on. It's all, and you know. Um, I know that we got coming on up what Hochul's doing about it, her contribution. Yeah, so, but before uh, we do that, Timmy, let me just jump over and tell everybody, hey, if you like the show, I ask you every, uh, every Wednesday, please subscribe. It's not that hard. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, get the notifications of the show, help us grow, help us continue to bring some good information to, uh, to the capital region. And uh, we'd really like you to be part of our, uh, of our family. Um, that would be great. Uh, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the bell. Yeah, just hit the bell, man. Hit the bell. Hit the box. Hit the hit the subscribe button. Um, Timmy, I want to jump over. We're talking about uh, immigration. We were talking about uh, <laughs> Kathy Hochul. Yeah. Now, you know the state legislature is passing their budget, right? Yeah, yeah. Nobody it's, wastes more money. Yeah, nobody yeah. wastes more money than New York State. When mm -hmm. they find money, instead of giving it back to the taxpayers, they figure out something else they need to spend it on. It's just bullshit. But let's yeah. just jump over to this because her two point four billion 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 two point four billion billion that's uh, going to be used for uh, illegal immigration. Yeah, yeah. All the kinds of handouts, all the social. New York Governor Kathy Hochul wants to earmark $2.4 billion to help New York City. New York Governor Kathy Hochul wants to earmark $2.4 billion to help New York City manage its growing migrant crisis. Under the proposal, the state will help take over some of the costs of providing shelter to the migrants as they arrive in the city. The governor says the decision is necessary because of the influx of asylum seekers showing no sign of slowing, but she added that the state deserves help from Washington. New York continues to carry the burden of sheltering more than 69,000 migrants. Since day one, I have said that this is ultimately the responsibility of the federal government to ad address this crisis. Since day one, the governor has said that it's the federal government's responsibility to deal with the migration of right. these illegal immigrants. Yep. I will call, once again, political bullshit. Because Kathy Hochul helped bring migrants to New York when they called for sanctuary city laws. When she said, and I recall, do you recall? Yeah. Come, we want you here in New York. Come. Yeah. And now all of a sudden she's like, oh, it's a, it's a federal problem. These people are so brazen to lie to your face because what they think is that you're too busy or you don't give a shit that you're not going to go back and say, hang on a minute. Yeah. Didn't I just see her say, come one, come all? So I did a little digging because it just bothers the shit out of me. I did a little digging and I want to just bring this up. I think that uh, the audience can enjoy this. I know I yeah. enjoyed it.
flip-flop from New York's top Democrat as thousands of flop from New York's top Democrat as thousands of migrants continue to be bussed into the state. With now Governor Kathy Hochul sounding the alarm about the influx of migrants after previously touting New York's sanctuary status. And this sudden change in rhetoric makes clear that no matter what you think about the southern governors bussing the migrants north, their gambit seems to have worked. Last night, Governor Hochul on CNN urged migrants to stay out of the Big Apple. Places like New York really are at capacity. You know, we have large hearts. You want to be generous and supportive to people who are experiencing a humanitarian crisis. But there is a limit to what we can do. We're at our limit. If you're going to leave your country, go somewhere else. That comment is a far cry from what the governor was saying on the same subject less than two years ago. We want people to come here, despite where they came from or despite the circumstances that drove them to this country and to this, and to this state. We see, say you are welcome here. We are welcome with open arms and we'll work to keep you safe. We'll not only house you, but we'll protect you. We want you here. Yeah. We welcome you with open arms. <clears throat> Come to New York. Fill yeah. up the streets. Take our hotels. Take all of our money. Please, come, come, come. And yeah. now, all of a sudden, it's, yeah. well, you can't come to New York. This is a federal problem. They're such liars. They're such yeah. bullshitters. And they just hope yeah. that people ain't paying attention. Right. And Eric Adams down there, mayor of New he's York City. He's another Yeah, nowhere. he's saying that he's telling him you got thirty days to leave. Okay. Yeah, they're just they're just crazy. Yeah, they yeah, invite crazy. them all in here. Timmy, listen. Yeah. Nothing bothered me more than watching uh, last week when I was watching the news, and we played yeah. it on this this mm, podcast. Yeah. Where in the city of Boston, they arrested five um, of these animals mm -hmm. that were. Uh, these animals, and, and the reason I call them animals, they're molesting and hurting little kids. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and the Democrats in Boston would not turn them in to ICE because part of their liberal bullshit policies is don't yeah. turn them in, don't yeah. tell ICE. So they were more willing to let guys that were molesting little kids lurk around the city of Boston than they were concerned about getting rid of them. Is that mentally ill? <laughs> Tell me about it. Is that yeah. normal? You know, I can't, you know, Sean, I can't help laughing because I, in the comments, I got Aaron Bowes here. Said, first says, I call bullshit. Then she comes back a couple minutes later and says, I call bullshit again. Well, she's right. But she's it is, right. It is bullshit. Yeah. So, so technically, these sanctuary cities, this, this Eric Adams, who was a cop at one time. Yeah. What a turncoat he's turned out to be right yeah yeah he's a loser who lets his cops down in new york city get shot yeah. and he comes up with bullshit excuses to blame yeah. everybody else yeah and then you got kathy hochel and then you got california and you got chicago and, and just put this in perspective again if you're yeah. listening to my show just listen to this again listen to this loud and clearly and tell me if i'm wrong tell timmy if he's yeah. wrong yeah. we are democratic cities we take this sanctuary city bullshit status that says we will not communicate with ICE who deports these criminals back to where they came from. So instead of communicating with ICE, you turn a blind eye to these animals raping and hurting little kids because you're more concerned about the liberal policies. And luckily, ICE itself found out about these things through tips hopefully from the cops, and they break in in the middle of the morning and arrest all these pieces of shit. And the mayors of the cities have a problem with it because who invited them to our city? Am I wrong by saying there's something screwed up here? Totally a mess, okay? And then they let them right out. They arrest them. Well, luckily, right uh, back out in the street. luckily, ICE took them, and they're they, yeah. they're they're, they're going to get rid of them. That's well, the whole point. And I and can tell I, you right up here in Albany, okay, the, there's a lot of guys in the jail, okay, that are on ICE detention. So it's, but it's far worse down New York City. Well, it's these big liberal cities hide criminals. Yeah. yeah. Because they don't want to turn them over. Listen, yeah. we are seeing all this shit happen in Albany. 
Kathy Sheen is a terrible, a terrible well, excuse to she, be called she mayor. Right. She declared Albany a sanctuary She did. City, she's didn't another she? yeah. liberal. And yeah. now she stands next to the police chief, like mm-hmm. scratching her head, trying to figure out why Albany has become such a terrible city. And shootings, then yeah. Yeah. shootings and stabbings and drugs yeah. And, yeah. and crime and dirty and, mm-hmm. and everything yeah. else. And she's trying to figure out how's this happening? Well, look in the mirror, redhead. It's happening yeah. because of you. Yeah. yeah, it's because of you and your she's policies. Getting of, she's getting out of dodge. I think she's not running again, is she? She's a multimillionaire yeah. who's not even from this area. She wanted to take this as a stepping stone. She thinks she's going to be the next congresswoman. That's what she ought to be—a congresswoman, because they're all screwed up too. Yeah, she they don't do right shit. In. They. Yeah. No, nah, you know, they don't do nothing. They collect a lot of money. They hang out. They have lunch. They go to functions. They go to meetings. They go to parties. And then they get together and they all fight like cats and dogs and nobody can solve yeah. nothing. They all because... end up coming out of Congress of millionaires. And, and even more millionaires. And, and then you and I and everybody watching this show has to pay the freight for their incompetence. Yeah, that's, yep. These elected officials are incompetent and nobody holds them accountable. Yeah. If you pass a law that says if somebody hurts somebody yeah. and they get out of uh, a jail within 45 minutes and they go out and hurt somebody again, you should be able to sue them. You should be yeah. able to go after them. Yeah. You should say, wait a minute, your policy has just caused somebody to crack me over to having a baseball bat. Yeah. We should be able to sue our politicians. Sued? That's right. Remember when they were stealing away the rights of police officers saying, let's take yeah. away their immunity? Why don't they take away their own freaking immunity? Protect the cops against the animals, the animals that you let come to this country. And because of the laws that you passed, you embolden them to just say, screw you to the cops, spit at the cops. And then somehow the cops are the bad people. And you assholes who make the policies, you know, you walk around like you have a bubble over your head and you're immune to anything. Maybe we should be able to go after them. Maybe elected officials should be able to be sued by people like you and I who are dealing with the consequences of their bad policies. Well, you know, I'm thinking, Sean, along the lines down the road, if, I mean, if society collapses, you are going to see that purge. And that yeah, purge will we'll be for real, maybe. <laughs> you know? I, 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 I hate to say it. Yeah. But I see, I see society collapsing right now. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know, every time you go on the news there, it just seems things are getting worse and worse and worse. Where's the end? Where's it going to end? I don't it's know where insane. it ends. You know? I don't know where it starts anymore. Yeah. I don't know where it yeah, ends just, anymore. Just for me walking around here, whether you go to various different stores, for the first time in my life, I feel like I'm a foreigner in my own country. And you know what? Yeah. I, and, and I'm not saying that's, that these are bad people. Okay, they a lot of them they just want to have a good life too, but you know the, what? Um, um, uh, it's we're being overrun. I think. Here's the sad part. The sad yeah. part is the good people, yeah, who are mixed in with the bad are irrelevant. Mm-hmm. And the reason I say that they're irrelevant is not because I don't have a heart. Yeah. Not because I don't want them not to come to this country. But they're irrelevant because you can't just look at people and say, he's the murderer. He's the drug dealer. He's Mm -hmm. the child rapist. He's the good guy. He's the bad. You can't pick people out of the crowd. You can't. No. So therefore, everybody has to be looked at as they're all problematic until they go through the system and they're checked for their background, for their criminal activity. Mm-hmm. And they're checked for their their uh, inoculations to make sure that they're not coming with all these yeah, diseases. All that stuff. We are seeing an uptick in gangs, crime, okay, and all disease, from disease too. all from illegal immigrants. Yeah, measles, and now yes, smallpox, we're, per, we're seeing all of these these diseases that were eradicated from the United States coming back in groves. You're yeah. seeing tuberculosis, yep. measles, mumps, and the list goes on. And I don't have to be a freaking rocket scientist to say, okay, what is the common thread that's happened over the course of the last few years? And it's we're letting people from other countries that don't have immunizations from these diseases. They're not required to even 
ask them if they had their shots. They just let them come over. So we let sick people in here with disease, and now we're seeing an explosion of disease. Yeah, We're seeing people from Venezuela that are let out of prisons that are the worst criminals over here dragging old ladies down the streets and beating them over their head for their phones, beating up our cops. It's New out York of City. control. Right. New York City, you, you, oh, you would have a woman walking down the street. Somebody just comes up out of nowhere and punches them in the face. Timmy, it's out of control. You and, and I grew the, up with Mayberry, you know, town of Mayberry, quiet. Everybody knows each other, peaceful. Not anymore. Once you walk out your door, okay, you got to be on guard. And that's well, you know, I was talking to somebody the other yeah. day um, who was at a sub stop, uh, mm -hmm. just a sub store. Yeah. And um, they're in there getting food. And there's two guys in there, young guys, just totally disrespecting the people that, that work at the store, screaming mm -hmm. at them. You didn't put the right cheese on my sub. Don't yeah. push me, man. You're gonna you're gonna regret it. I mean, we just we have a society where we talk to people. Look, I'm 57 years old tomorrow. Yeah. Thank God I'm not 27 because I was in a lot of fights in my life. I'd be in at least 10 a day now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'd be or I'd be yeah. shot or stabbed already yeah. because I just have this. I can't help myself. If I'm standing yeah. in, a, in in a in a sub shop. And somebody's screaming and throwing potato chips and a freaking sub at somebody because they didn't put the right mustard on. I'm going to whack them. Yeah. I'm going to whack them. That's just well, the way it's going to be because well, I'm not going to let the everyday per person just get to, you know, be treated like shit. Yeah, I'm not. Well, well, I'm in Walmart, Walmart Sean, and uh, uh, the uh, associate is helping me, right? This guy just barges right in front of me. He starts taking over. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. She's helping me right now. You can wait your time. So she takes care of me. Then later on, about, a, you know, 10 minutes later, I'm up at the register. The guy comes up and gets in my face and he goes, he goes, you don't know how lucky you are right now. And I said, really? Yeah. I said, you don't know how lucky you are right now. Yeah. yeah. Because, you I know, saved... I, I'm concealed, pal. I got concealed yeah. carry. Well, I, I don't have nothing to conceal because I, I don't have no weapons, right? Yeah. But I still got one good fight in, in me, and I'm, yeah. I don't want to waste it unless it's a top three contender, yeah. Tim. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't want to blow it because I only got one left. But I'm <laughs> telling you, I, I, there's a store that I hate more than anything. And every once in a while, I just have to go there, and that's Walmart. I've never seen more arrogant, ignorant, rotten people in some of these stores treating each other yeah. in their pajamas and their freaking Mickey Mouse uh, slippers, screaming like they're just ravaged animals. And yeah. I think to myself, what happened to society here? What's going on yeah. here? Yeah, it's crazy. Is it me? Am I? Have I lost my mind? Is it me, or is is society really just breaking down? Is it the it's, wild, wild west? It's, it's bad. Some people just jump right in front of you in line, and then hey, you say, "Hey, hey, 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 what are you doing?" They just turn around and say, "Hey, too bad." And that's, Timmy, it's I, happened. I was in Stewart's this morning. You know, I go yeah. to Stewart's every morning, and I'm blessed to have coffee with my dad and and bullshit for a little yeah. bit. And um, I watched a guy walk in. He walked over to the bathroom. And whatever he grabbed off the shelf, he shoved it in his jacket, and he walked out. Wow. And I wanted to, I was thinking about saying something. Mm -hmm. And then this is what dawned on me. And I don't know if Stewart's is a liberal store. I really don't know. I know it's they're good to their employees at one point. When you retire there, you're a millionaire. Yeah. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, they work them like animals. But, but many of these stores have told their employees if they steal, don't say nothing. Don't do nothing. Yeah, so why yeah. the hell am I going to say anything? Yeah. Right? Why yeah. am I going to do anything? Yeah. So so we've we've not only emboldened people, we've just come to the realization that you go ahead and steal. You go ahead and steal. You steal. You steal. It's like nobody gives a shit no more. Yeah. Everybody can just steal and uh, nobody seems to care. You know, the problem is, is the day of the Good Samaritan, Sean, is gone. You know, because if you get involved, you get arrested. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and that's the general feeling of uh, the employees now. Your employer will fire you if you defend the store, even, even against theft. Our schools are out of control with kids disrespecting, yeah. even punching and hitting teachers, right? Yeah. yeah. Our, 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 our colleges 
are brainwashing kids so that they think that America is a bad place. Can you ever imagine? I wish that the United States had the ability to say, all of you people that are protesting and saying America sucks and America should die in America, put them on the bus and go drop them off in China for a month mm-hmm. and then see how much America sucks. Bring them to Russia. See if they can pick up a freaking Hamas flag like they were doing in, 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 uh, in you no, know, was it Chicago? No, it was in uh, San Francisco when they stopped the whole entire bridge, thousands of people. Yeah. Because these morons want to chant, you know, uh, down with America. Hamas yeah. is great. Hamas. These are murderers, rapists, raping yeah. kids, cutting people's heads off. And we have people in the United States of America praising them, stopping yeah, traffic, thousands of them. If you don't see what we're letting into this country, you're blind. If you can't see what's going to happen, you're blind. Timmy, I said it before. Anybody who's a firefighter, a police officer, they're going to know what I'm talking about. Yeah. When 9-11 happened, just a handful of people blew up the World Trade Center, right? Just a handful of, I think it was nine people, but I think at the end, some of them, let's just say it's two handfuls. Let's say it was 10 people. Yeah. I think it was nine. I think by the time the the, the planes hit the tower, there was a handful there. Yeah, the The other ones. But overall, I think. But overall, it's a small. 19 or so, you know. A small group of people that come over here with with bullshit that they're going to learn to fly some kind of pass to get into the United States. Yeah. You want to learn to fly, but you don't want to learn how to land it. Right. After 9-11, I listened to every politician for about four months talk about how great firemen were, how they needed to have more resources, how great police are, how they needed to have more resources, how the United States is never going to allow people to come in this country again without having full background checks so that this can never happen again. That was a handful of people. We have millions of people under Joe Biden. And now I really love this. And I don't give a shit if you get mad at me because I am not a Trump fan. But I am not a Biden fan. And I know when I was better in my life just a few years ago with better policies than I am under the Democrats that I've carried their flag for 40 freaking years. I carried the Democratic flag for 40 years. I'm ashamed to carry that flag now. I'm ashamed to even carry the freaking title, right? But at the end of the day, you have a president of the United States who says, I'll close the border, but I need these powers. Well, why didn't you need the freaking powers to ruin the border? Why did you need the, the why didn't you need the Congress to pass laws to dismantle all the things that prevented these people coming? But all of a sudden you need some kind of, you know, you need some kind of congressional power so that you can bullshit. You know what the congressional power was? I could keep putting people, 5,000 people could come over a day. I'm getting money for Ukraine. I'm getting money for this. I'm getting money for that. You're going to see right this week, they're trying to separate all the bills, Timmy, right? Money for Ukraine, money for uh, Israel, money for this. And the Democrats are going berserk. You know why they're going berserk? Because when you do that as an individual bill, that's the only thing you can vote on. Right, yeah. It's a package deal, sixty-six billion or so for Ukraine, and then Israel, uh, something like thirty-one, and then for uh, the American border, nothing for our border, <laughs> and then a few, maybe ten, thirteen billion for our use here. It's but look, insane that but here's, more here's, of our yeah. Here's the point I'm trying to make. Mm-hmm. You know why the Democrats won't vote for that? Because they hide millions and millions of dollars and all this bullshit and these big packages of bills with 30,000 pages. Yeah. Yeah. And so they want all of their goodies and they want to give all of their goodies to their buddies and they want to do all this other shit. They, you know, they want to be able to fund, you know, young kids who can't decide whether they're a boy or a girl at 10. Well, at 10, I can tell you, my kids didn't know what the hell they were, right? I got, I got kids. They're not thinking about their sexuality. But at 10 years old, they now want to fund the ability for these kids to go have surgery to transition their sexual parts without a parent consent. Without a parent consent. Yeah. You have no say in what your kids do now. That's the stuff they want to fund. Look at that. 61 billion or whatever they want to send to Ukraine. It just gets washed all the way back and it ends back in in their pockets, in their programs, they get a cut of a few million dollars. I mean, it's been going on forever. 
But yeah, you know, it, it is true. Um, look at what's going on with the uh, women's college, women's sports. Okay, we all see what's going on. You got to, all you got to do is say I identify as a, a woman, and it's not just sports. It's going into ba- uh, women's bathrooms. Why is it always men having to be pretend to be women? involving themselves with women yeah, absolutely you don't see women pretending to be men and going in men's rooms no you know what you see you see people as adults who yeah. realize that for whatever reason and you won't understand it and i won't understand it but for whatever reason yeah. they feel like they're trapped in the wrong body mm-hmm. and my response to them is you are an adult you know at this point in life now what you feel Mm-hmm. And you are more than welcome to do whatever you need to do to live a happy life. And I want you to live that happy life. Okay. But you can't do this while you're a baby. You can't do this when yeah. you're nine and 10 and 11 and 12. Yeah. You, well, look at, you can't get a freaking tattoo until you're 18. You can't perish your nose till you're 18. Yeah. You can't go in the military till you're 18. Yeah. Right. You can't take a freaking baby aspirin in school when I was a kid, unless you had your parents permission. Yeah, that's but true, now yeah. I can go to a doctor and, and say, doctor, I feel like a girl today. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, hang on, Mr. Morris. We don't even have to tell your mother. Lay down on the table. We'll yeah. cut your nuts off. Mm-hmm. And then when you go home, you can walk in with a dress and say, yeah. hey, guess what? Yeah. You have a daughter now. Yeah. It just That's, that's how strange. insane it sounds. And, right. And, and I'll tell you, parents even allow it. They some say, parents are nuts. Yeah, some, some of these parents some are nuts. Parents do. Yeah. Some parents are pushing their crazy bullshit, their mental yeah. illness yeah. onto their kids yeah. as a justification for them. It okay? is happening. Yes, That's what's happening. happening. But the majority of people, the normal people, mm-hmm. I, I love, like, I love my kids. I love my grandkids. If one of my kids came to me and said, hey, listen, I feel like I'm trapped. You know what I'd say? Hey, let's let, let let's work this through and let's see what happens. And when you're old enough to make that decision, yeah. I'll support you with anything that you want to do. I am not opposed. Do you know this? I don't know if anybody knows this because I've been out of the legislature for 10 years. Do you know that I sponsored, carried, and passed the first legislation in 40 years in Albany County Legislature to give equal rights to transgender people? Yeah. There was a there was a bill that they tried to pass through the legislature for 30 some years and it mm-hmm. could never pass. And when I became the chairman, I lobbied for those people. You know why? Cuz I wanted them to have the same rights I did. But when I was meeting with them, I said, "Listen, I'm going to make something perfectly clear. If you think I'm passing bills so men can go in to lo- locker rooms with little girls, you're out of your mind." Yeah. Because I'm not, I, I'm not going there. That to me, that's mental illness. But if you're asking me to protect you so you can get an apartment, so you don't get fired from your job because you wear a wig or whatever yeah. it is you have to do to express yourself, I'm all for that, right? Well, I don't you, care if you yeah. go to work and wear a wig. They shouldn't be able to yeah. fire you. But what happens, Sean, as you know, you let the, you let the camel stick his nose, in, nose inside the tent and the next thing you do, you get the whole damn camel. Well, here's a funny and thing. And that's where we're at. So I'll tell you a funny story. So we were lobbied by hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of transgender mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. Uh, people, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And every one of them agreed with me. Everyone supported it. You know why? Because we were dealing with the true people who were going through these issues mm-hmm. and understood what they really wanted to do with their life. And if they don't impose their way, and they didn't want to be, they weren't creeps where they want to go in the bathrooms and all this stuff. They say, no, we're not looking to do that. We understand we have a role in society and we understand what our role is in society. We don't want to do that. You know who pushed this shit? Politicians. Again, it's politicians that ruin the world. Politicians push this shit because every day they're looking for another group of people to join in with them so they can keep the votes and they can stay powerful and you can never unelect them because they have all these people. Once upon a time, there was an organization, right, that helped gay people, right? Yeah. LGTB, right? Lesbian gay people. And they had a, a very important role in society. And their role was to make sure that if you were gay, you were protected and had the same rights as a straight person. 
and I'm all for it. I don't care who you sleep with. I got gay friends. I love them. I don't care who you sleep with. So you should be able to have the same rights I have, right? But what happened is they did such a great job in helping get the rights for gay people that there was nothing really else for them to fight for. Gay people could get married. Gay people had all the same rights as you and I did. There was nothing different between you and I when it came to civil rights uh, and rights in New York State for gay uh, people, right? Are we on the yeah. same page with that, right? So there was nothing left. So all of a sudden, what do they become? LGTBQXP126+. They now are involved in every freaking thing because yeah. they just need to have an agenda because you know what? They're all making millions of dollars running these organizations and they have nothing to fight for. So it's no longer just gay. Now, you know, back it's then, everything. if you talked about transgenders yeah. to that group right. of people, they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. we're well, not in that same because category. They're going to get government funding and they do. Well, that. they're all just now every yeah. day you look at it, it's LGBTQ256. It's almost yeah. like a math equation yeah. to understand them. And the yeah. reason they're like that, brother. It's because they need to exist because they need to stay rich. And the people who run those organizations are making millions of dollars. So now all of a sudden they're fighting for everything. They're fighting for things that people don't even care about and don't want, but they own the politicians. Sean, what I want to do is I want to take a moment here to answer a question from one of our listeners. Okay. Um, and this is coming from uh, Aaron Vols, and her question was very, very simple. And I, I'm going to explain what happened here. She was, and, and it is crazy. The women that got drafted into the WNBA just uh, two days ago, right? Monday. Um, what happened is their base salary when they enter into the WNBA is only $76,000. Insane compared to what the men make, okay, especially in the NBA. But here's what really happened. The WNBA has historically lost money. They did. But now since Albany wrecked, okay, the low attendance ratings, okay, it was so fantastic in Albany that that with that Sweet 16 and uh, the uh, Elite Eight, okay. Now they're expanding a team in uh to in Golden State, okay. And the league is, is they 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 finally shine a light on it. And if this continues to grow the way it's growing, these women will make that big money. You know, they make a, a certain money under doing product endorsements and stuff like that. But you're right. It's the base salary is way too low and I don't understand it. OK, but, you know, I think it's going to change, you know, but, you know, how can they only earn you know, a labor? Uh, Billy Keller earns more than these professional athletes. Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you, Timmy. Yeah, they earn what what the, the, the um, they're going to earn what the uh, public is willing to pay. Yeah, yeah. For, and, first of all, I have no problem with what they earn because first and foremost, the league has been almost bankrupt every year. The ratings are in the toilet. If it, it wasn't- All those things are true, yes. Right? And and the reality is uh, you can't pay somebody a million dollars if if you're in, you know- If, if you're your not income, making money, yeah. Yeah, and, if your income yeah. is, is minus a million, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and that's and this happening. And this has nothing to do with your sex- yeah. It doesn't have anything to do with men versus women. Mm. There's no way that a woman is going to make as much as a man until the ratings are in the millions. Now, you're absolutely right. In the college games, they broke records. They Caitlin Clark everywhere. may be the reason that women start to she, see better yeah. salaries. Well, because she's a generational player. That's you right. Know, it was you, like... You don't see women in that come out like she did, and she's labeled a generational player. They had a fantastic women that went into the draft. Okay, and look at I. I don't really like to see it take off, and I like to see Albany get another Sweet Sixteen or even a better uh, a Final Four. But well, they better they start uh, cleaning up their streets and finding they, stuff to do in Albany. Yeah, well, there's nothing to do according to who. <laughs> <laughs> Lobo. Rebecca Lobo. Rebecca Lobo. Yeah. Lobo was on the mic. She had more news than the murder. <laughs> yeah, you know what did. I mean? Yeah. But but yeah, so so that's the truth. And, yeah. and 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 still the women's pro basketball has no ratings compared to the two college games. Absolutely. I mean, 
it's like you could go to them games and nobody's there watching them. The endorsements ain't there. But listen, Caitlin Clark has already signed for about $12 million. So she's got to do quite well. Some of the women in the WNBA are multimillionaires because of the endorsements. Yeah. And and do you remember when the NBA almost went bankrupt? And then all of a sudden, there's these two names, Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. And oh, they yeah. showed up and were Michael generational Jordan. players and yeah. turned that league upside down. Yeah. And then yeah. the Jordans came along. Yeah. Well, that, that's why they don't make as much money. But listen. If Down they the want road, to pay me ninety thousand a year to play basketball, yeah, you'll do it. Right? I take it in a heartbeat, yeah. right? So yeah. that's why they're not making as much. But Timmy, they'll make some. A lot of them are rich, Aaron, and uh, and it ain't. It doesn't really have anything to do with women versus men. It has to do with ratings and and sponsors and people well, like you and I showing up to the games. Hey, look at more viewers watch the uh, WNBA than actually the men's side of the w and uh of the college uh, fine yeah the college okay um march madness more people tuned in to watch the women's side yeah. of that tournament than the men's side well, again and that's caitlin, the first time in history because caitlin was she captivated yes, she yeah. captivated look at i i never yeah. watched i never watched a college girls basketball game ever i don't really watch basketball yeah. so it is not I do. I'm not a big basketball I fan. To, I like look at that. I like to watch a, uh, the college uh, uh, women's softball because they're aggressive. I like softball. I like they're, watching softball. I, I just like, like they're aggressive. It's not like every every play the men run down there and just one pat and a slam and it's like five one on ones going on all at once. But the women they got they they're tactical. They fight. They they you know they I I just think that they're the way they play. Okay, is not a lot less one and one, but more team, and that's why I I really like watching them and watching the the uh, women's uh, softball and and stuff like that because they really play more as a team, I believe. Yeah. But anyway, well, listen, I guess the moral of my story was even I want to watch Caitlin Clark because she captivated me. Yeah. And during that game, I realized there was a lot of other good players as well. So yeah. Hey, yep. good luck to all of them. Um, yep. more importantly, I got a, a message saying that the police officer who got shot had some surgery and he's recovering. Good. Our thoughts and prayers are with him and his family. I hope Albany mayor, uh, Kathy Sheen, um, sees the city that she's built and the crime that's yeah. uh, taken place and her liberal policies, um, that are getting cops shot. And, um, maybe yeah. she'll take a minute to worry about that and not worry about if the tulip queen is actually a man. Because yeah. that's what's going on yeah. in that liberal city as well. But yeah. uh, hey, everybody, uh, thank you uh, for the birthday wishes. And I got two, and I got two call outs. You got two call outs. Two what call the- outs. Okay, and look at uh, no councilman meeting uh, minutes have been posted since January, Adam. Okay, so let's get on that. You told me last time you were taking care of that, and it's not done. And the same thing with the. Uh, Public Safety Committee at three meetings this year. No minutes of those meetings posted. Okay, we, you know, if you want to have the people informed what's going on, you got to get those minutes on up. All right. Well, you know, the problem is, is that you just said something. If yeah. they want it to get yeah. the public yeah. informed, they yeah. don't want the public. To be, I informed. try to hunt down to find out minutes and what's going on, so we can come on the podcast, Sean, and talk about certain things, let people know what's going on. Uh, uh, and I can't do it if if they don't get the minutes posted on up there. I'm not going to foil everything. Well, listen, here's what I would tell you: if you want to be informed, watch Truth Lies of Political Bullshit. That's it. Subscribe to our channel, hit the bell. We're going to tell you the stuff real and raw and no bullshit. We're not going to hide anything. If they're doing yeah. good, we'll tell you they're doing good. If they're doing bad, we'll tell you they're doing bad. We get a lot of information. Right Right from the mouth yep. of the people who are dealing with the problems, seeing yep. the problems. So yep. everything that we have is coming from legitimate sources. So it yeah, ain't just from the people. It ain't just me and Timmy throwing yeah. out our our own two cents. So. Yeah, it's from the people. We get a. I don't know about you, Sean, but it's a, for me. It's almost like an eight-hour day. Uh, <laughs> okay, thank God I'm retired <laughs> because I can deal with it. But for Christ's sake, it, it never ends. Yeah. Well, hey, hey, I appreciate it. Everybody, it was good to see you. Thanks again for the birthday wishes, Timmy. Please yep. say a happy birthday to your wife for me. Everybody out there who's an April baby, you're yep. the best. And uh, we'll see you next week.